it's interesting because I used to sell for Yellow Pages, you know, the phone book things. Um, and you're dealing with a lot of small businessmen. It was mostly men, builders, plumbers, decorators, all that sort of stuff. And the women, unfortunately, the most successful women were the women who didn't flirt but allowed ambiguity. Nothing ever happened. I'm never, that's not what I'm suggesting at all, but a man will be dealt with by a, a pretty girl and men are pretty stupid, basically. They're like, Ugh. but the, for the married man like yourself, so Anasuya, that, that, I mean, Olivia, how long ago were you a financial advisor? That was about, say, six years ago. Six years ago. And so that was happening in the real world. Yeah. As well as social media. Correct, yeah. I asked you, Anasua, before on a previous episode, if because you're empowering whip, you are, so do you have your platform anymore or is it mostly ads you run now? Now I used to do on mostly on uh, mostly ad. Okay, so you're not um, sort of you're not. I don't post regularly on LinkedIn or you know other. So mostly I'm doing ad because I'm getting the advantage of that because ad is giving me you know the results more quickly than. That. Absolutely, but are you still offering your service for Indian women to have this online platform? Yeah, of course. Right, 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 yeah. right. So my question then is. Given the way that women around the world are mistreated and ignored, are you now still getting pushback from families and from husbands? Yeah, it is still there. It is still there. Mostly the mainstream Indian society, you know, like Haryana uh, people and Rajasthan, that Indian, uh, those areas. It's very vulnerable society for in, women. And they have so many, I mean, now the women are coming out there, but st uh, still, still they are like, you know, it is so much, and they, are, they have a very cultural, what do you call it? Not, it's, it's more religious, you know, it's mm -hmm. created by the society. Religious, like, you know, there's some kind of uh, uh, custom rituals they follow. I mean, they, they believe that the, these are, our life. This is the life, how it is for a woman. They don't want to come out. And, and if you talk about the social media and speaking on against of that, they will not, nobody will come out and talk about it. They don't have, they will not. That's for sure. But still, there are many women, they are, I know, mostly the NGOs, they are working for the uh, people in that uh, low in locality, I mean, the region area. They are looking for the women to come up and talk and they are they are participating. People are, women are participating in very in different, different way. Like, you know, in I'll, I'll just talk about one example now in, in Rajasthan, a very small village mm -hmm. where, you know, they have women who, if, if you, if a girl will take a bird, I mean, girl child, they directly, they killed when they are, you know, you cannot give birth to a girl child. It's, it's, it's like an abomination. Same, for in, girl China. Mm. Same in China for many years. And, and um, similar in Japan as well. Japan now has a serious problem because um, there was such an imbalance in the sexual... It's quite an interesting culture, actually, but there's such an imbalance in, in female rights that boys have gone off into manga and cartoons and, and sex dolls girls are left not wanted and now they've got an aging population with no and they don't have any immigration if i went to japan i'd stand out i mean obviously i stand out anyway but there are no there are just just japanese people there and now they're all getting old so this um this habit of men um of being dicks basically is coming around to bite us all on the arse because of these pressures we face. 
I just finished reading, I say I just finished reading, I read a little while ago um, Melinda Gates' book called The Moment of Lift. And in that book, so uh, I uh, um, don't want to know anything personal, but in areas of Indian Africa, female genital mutilation is the norm. Sorry. Hey. Um, and uh, the story is uh, a, a girl, because it would dishonor her father, agreed to have it done to her. But she said, I'll only do this if I can stay in school. And the story, she stayed in school and um, had this horrible thing <sighs> happen to her and then went on to get a PhD in America. And she went back to <laughs> her country <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> Don't move me away. She went back to her country and has opened 200 schools um to help women but so does the phrase untouchable come from india or is it something that's a a worldwide thing and i can't say it's a maybe it is there everywhere or maybe some particular society they still practice it right i actually um because it's all about culture, you know, they are, it's, it's made by all the human society only, mm -hmm. the culture, yeah, these are cultural issues. Because what she, what she did was the, the, the um, position of women is so low in this cast of, of um, this cast um, that they are beaten and raped and murdered without anyone even beginning to think about complaining. And, you know, I don't know how often it happens, but it's happened enough that it's made the news in England that a woman will be stoned to death because she's been raped by her own, stoned to death by her family because she's been raped. So, what, what, what can you say what can you say that's going to make a difference to a woman watching this who's who lives in a culture that is so repressive um, i'll go for you olivia first because um, I've got a few contacts in South Africa and the economy has been an L since the 2008 crash. So, you know, I didn't know that two thirds of the children don't have schools to go to. Um, 